I have often had young professionals approaching me and asking what is the path to become a CFO quickly. How many of you here aspire to become a CFO? Good. And I am sure you all want to be there very fast. Now that's the problem with B schools. Most of our education is based on Harvard case studies. Every case study invariably starts with the CEO sitting in his corner office, having coffee, looking outside the window and having a big business problem in his hand. We all end up believing that in our first job, we will directly land up into that room. While the reality is exactly opposite. You guys want to do high end strategic stuff, you all end up doing a lot of mundane operational work. But the deep desire to become a CXO quickly continues to haunt us, right? After five years of my post MBA experience, I walked into the CEO room one day and said, look, I've had five years of star performance in the organization. I need CFO role immediately, else I'm quitting. There no option, I was a critical talent, I was offered CFO role immediately. However, now when I look back, I often ask myself, was I really ready for the CFO role? Could I have done better if I had asked for it a little later? So today I am going to talk about the question that every CFO aspirant must ask oneself before taking up this role. Am I ready to be a CFO? And my own personal experiences of having managed CFO responsibility for over a decade. So let's begin. <clears throat> you guys all believed in this CFO, CEO story walking into the room and all? That's not true. Nothing like that ever happened. What happened was exactly opposite. I was called by the CEO and said, you are not fit for investments role. I was happy doing investments. I never wanted to be a CFO. But he said, your DNA is that of a CFO. An eye for detail, risk averse. You are not the ever optimistic risk taking equity investments guy. I was just not okay with it. I was super reluctant. But literally, I was pushed into the CEFO role. Cut to today. 10 years. I don't want to do anything but CFO role. At least that's what it is today. I thank Almighty. I thank my CEO at that time for this very genuine intervention, which was a career defining moment for me. Last few days, I have been trying to do a lot of research on TEDx videos. You will see a lot of videos about CEO leadership, entrepreneurship, but there is hardly anything about CFO, which is emerging as a very important role. So let's take a quick look at what this role involves. Very simply, it has two parts. Bucket one is the core transactional operational role. And bucket two is the more strategic finance. The key takeaway is that as youngsters, we only want to focus on the strategic part. While it should be the reverse. The more operational and transaction part helps you build the right foundation. The more time you spend on this, you get a deep understanding of business. And then the strategic expertise comes automatically. For CFO, one has to be expert in both. Now I am a part-time professor also. So we like 3 by 3 matrix for everything. So I have designed a 3 by 3 matrix to 
take a quick CFO readiness test. And this has some Bollywood Tata also. Let's begin with the three myths. How many of you believe that non CS cannot be good CFOs? Non chartered accountants cannot be good CFOs. Yes, if you look at the data, it's one area which is heavily dominated by chartered accountants. CFO Niti, the recent bestseller book, was co authored by a dear friend Sandeep, who happens to be coincidentally a batchmate from IM Indore. They profile six top CFOs of the country. Five out of them are chartered accountants. Last week when I received Business World Finance 40 under 40, a jury commented that 35 out of the 40 are his CA students. So yes, it is dominated by chartered accountants. Does that mean non cs cannot be good CFOs? Yours truly is standing here. Of course, my father won't agree with this. A perfect Marwadi businessman. He runs a small business in a small town. He'll call me every year, 1st April. He will have his balance sheet and PL breakup exactly ready. And he'll ask me, How about you? And I'll tell him, Dad, this is 7,000 crore business. I've not even done my monthly close. I will need at least a month to come with annual numbers. And he will say, you are a pathetic CFO. How come you don't have your numbers on 1st April? <coughs> Nonetheless, CA isn't a must. With due respect, while one need not be a CA to be a good CFO, you will definitely require a lot of smart CAs to be part of your team to be a successful CEO. And I have been lucky on this front. I have always been surrounded by a lot of chartered accountants, whether it's at home, in office, in hostel, and I will and I have learned a lot from them. The important point is that if you are not a chartered accountant, then you have a lot of catch up to do. And that is again where the operational and the transactional aspect of business becomes important. So again, one needs to, to focus a lot of time on that. Second, a lot of techies believe they have nothing to do in finance. A recent McKinsey report on the new role of CFO says, a majority of CFOs think that the organizations are not re ready for digital transformation. Digitization of finance function is a big opportunity. And there is serious talent crunch. So if there is any techie who has a bit of understanding of business and finance, there is enormous potential for them. Today, startups, mid-sized businesses are crazily running after digital transformation in their business. If you are a smart techie, you have a sure seat in the CFO quarterly. Third, you guys remember Akshay Kumar playing Rakesh Dhawan in the movie Mission Mangal? We all believe leaders have to be like super cool, celebrating failure, walking nonchalantly despite goof ups. Right? Don't do that. You'll be fired the next day. CFO is serious business. There is no scope for slippage on basic work. There is no experimentation except some peripheral activities. This is like aviation. You can experiment with the food menu, but you can't have your pilot experimenting when he's flying. 
he has to follow the SOP. Next, let's look at what CFO DNA is like. The first one is my favorite. It takes you years of practice and understanding financial models, business models, running them again and again on Excel to be able to reach a point where you can talk about numbers like this. In my initial days, when I used to do modeling, throughout the, stop staring at me, I meant financial modeling. <laughs> In my initial days, when I used to do financial modeling, I would do that almost the entire day, sometimes entire month for my initial five years. I was running the same financial model again, again and again. This is also one litmus test that I apply on youngster when I try to see their ability to work on numbers without Excel. CFO is like a cocktail of various professions. You have to be a lawyer when reading, a marketeer when you are doing fundraise, a traffic police when you are managing controls, a techie when you are doing digital transformation. An engineer when you are doing number crunching and you have to be good at all of them and this comes only with deep understanding of business. How many of you would pick up a high paying KPO job and as against a low pay job with ground level operational responsibilities? Come on guys, be honest. I've been there, done that. Please change your mind. I did it in six months. At this stage, pay doesn't matter. Getting to learn the business at the ground level, the most operational and transactional aspects is what is more important. You guys, the third one on the DNA. You guys recall the movie Tare Zami Pe? Not the young boy, his elder brother, Johan Avasti. Super studious, always full marks, always punctual, have read everything, takes a bath, puts hair oil every day. That's CFO DNA. <coughs> I wasn't like that in college or school. But after I became CFO, I have changed. I'm not like Johanna Vasti. No, seriously, I put on hair oil every day. Getting full marks every time means you cannot miss a single page. This is zero tolerance job. A single mistake in execution, reporting, controls can have serious consequences. Finally, the CFO focus areas. I can't read this. Sorry for the color change. The first one is building high potential teams. Now this may sound like a cliched leadership talk, but building future ready teams is the key to success. Hiring fast and hiring right is a definite sign that you are ready for the next role. I put this as a KRA for all my core members. <clears throat> understanding business. I would say not understanding managing business is the second core focus area. When I was a CFO, before that I had a lot of time being spent on business development, strategy, finance, operations and that helped me big time in doing my CFO role. These days, we have businesses with high growth potential. The shareholders want growth at a speed like there is no tomorrow. And this leads to the classic challenge of control versus growth. Unless the CFO understands business, he will not be able to contribute in this growth journey. The final Bollywood masala 
easy guess rancho of course rancho didn't have these subjects in 3 years otherwise he would have given up long back my personal experience i am not an engineer but started with investment in large infrastructure businesses i had read a lot on civil engineering right from soil investigation pricing view queues designing roads contract management after 2 3 years i was interviewing iit grads and when they came on board they refused to believe that i am not an engineer so finally how many out of 9 for you guys even if it is 9 out of 9 accept the role but don't believe that you are ready is this constant feeling of not being ready will keep the student alive in you i doubt all my work even today i test it through various methods to reassure myself be ruthless when you are trying to find gaps and leakages in your work i'm sure you'll find enough just accept it and focus on improvements because the day you believe that you are ready you will stop listening reading and learning and that is where the problem begins no attempted modesty but i still believe that i am not ready to be a cfo and still have a lot to learn thanks for being a wonderful audience